Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lucy Pierfon, and I'm the Marketing and Special Events Director at the Kent Memorial Library. The library is excited to welcome you to this very special art talk and conversation between artists and valued Kent Memorial Library staff members, Lucy Pierpont and Maria LaFontaine. They will speak with each other about their artwork, which is currently on display in a joint exhibit in the library's gallery and online. The conversation will be followed immediately by the Kent Library Association annual meeting. Helping us this afternoon is our technology point person, Amanda Myers. Thank you, Amanda, for being the behind the scenes genius. And now I'd like to welcome our special guests, Marie Lafayette and ironically me, Lucy Pierpont. Maria, I have, hi Maria. Hi. Maria, I have, Work to, Maria and I have worked together at the library for six years. Our shared office space is located in the loft, and that is why we called our joint exhibit Lofty Spirits. When we began working together, neither of us knew that we shared a common love for photography. Each of us was busy taking photos on a daily basis as amateur photographers. So when we began showing each other our work, we decided to have an exhibit together in the future at the library and put our names in for the future date of 2021. And finally, here we are. <laughs> Maria, tell us what you do at the library as administrative secretary. Well, as administrative secretary, I write a lot of letters. I cut checks and I pay bills. I make monetary deposits and take money in. I may maintain the patron database and the financial spreadsheets. Lately, because of COVID, I've also been selling some donated books online through eBay, which has been an exciting and new way to um, get taken some money for the book sale, seeing that the book sale cannot be active at this point. Um, I'm also spending some time lately at the circulation desk, which is a lot of fun, and I'm learning how to circulate books and answer many questions patrons have. Wow. It sounds like you're invaluable. <laughs> no, not quite, but... <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You pretty much keep that place running. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, it is fun. I've had the good fortune to visit your picturesque farm, Mountain View Farm on Fuller Mountain Road in Kent. In addition to your part-time job at the library, you are running this farm, caring for animals, growing vegetables. I don't know what else you do, but how does your photography fit in with your busy schedule? Well, I have the privilege to live in a very picturesque place in this beautiful town of Kent, Connecticut. So it doesn't take much to go outside and find something that's worth capturing. Um, as I'm working outside farming, I do find lots of interesting things that I'd like to take pictures of. And not every picture is worth saving or captures the moment, but lots of times they do. And, and that's why today I have photographs that I'm happy to share with everyone. Um, there's, there's lots to see out in nature with the changing seasons and with things growing. The natural growth process of plants um, is just a wonderful thing to take pictures of. Yeah. So Lucy, yeah. you're next, Lucy. Uh-oh. <laughs> so tell us what you do at the library as marketing and special events director. Oh boy, let's see. Um... Well, for 10 years, I've had the good fortune of designing and executing all kinds of adult programs from conception to putting the chairs back in the closet. These programs include technical education, author, artist, musician, talks, nature programs, theme programs, the sky's the limit. Not only do I design the programs, but I have to make sure somebody attends them. Cross my fingers that the presenter is present 
and that his or her PowerPoint or movie is technically supported. Each program or event needs to be publicized. It is a never ending yet extremely interesting job. I can't recall one dull moment. And let it be known that your attendance to your programs is very high and your programs are wonderful and sought after. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So in addition to your part-time job at the library, you also work part-time at Clem Real Estate in Washington Depot and keep your freelance business going. How does your photography fit in with your busy schedule? Well, Maria, like you, I think the busier you are, the more time you might be able to find for a little bit of time for things you like to do. And I really, every day I try to take a walk outside and that's usually when I have a chance to capture some of my work. I'm so lucky. I live in lovely, a lovely Connecticut town and work in two picturesque towns, Kent and Washington. I also love to travel and my camera is with me wherever I go. And I'm not going to tell you that it's in my phone, but it is. Um, uh, the photos in the exhibit do not include people. However, I've been taking photos of people at adult programs or fundraising events for the library for 10 years. I think it's very hard to capture good event photos. Many years ago, I worked in the public relations office at Hartwick College. One of the college's sports photographers told me he always tried to have three things happening in his action sports photos. I often think of that unsolicited advice and have kept it in the forefront of my brain, attempting to have that happen in my photos. I'm not, not definitely sure this happens every photo I take, but, and like you, Maria, I don't keep all my photos, but I do find it hard to get rid of them. So that's a, that's a dilemma that maybe we all have. I have way too many Absolutely. photos. Absolutely. So it is sometimes really hard to decide which ones to keep. In fact, it was a little decide, hard to decide which ones to use for the show. Did you have that problem? I certainly did. Um, incidentally, one little side story. When we chose the date for our exhibit, we never, ever, ever dreamed our show would be presented with such limitations due to the ongoing COVID situation. We, of course, would rather be throwing a fun reception at the gallery inside the library where we could celebrate together. So this program is our solution. Cheers. And now Cheers. we're going to sit back and you are all, the audience is all going to enjoy our entire show. So sit back and relax. Thank you. 
a grower, I spend much of my time in nature. I have witnessed many amazing moments of incredible beauty. I make a point to take in my natural surroundings each day and reflect. For me, there is no greater peace. It has always been my goal to work with nature in a symbiotic fashion, creating only that which is intended. I am happy to share some of my favorite captures. I do not go seeking objects to photograph. Rather, my photographs are moments out of a normal day in my life that I stumble upon. They are simple, serene, and a constant reminder of the incredible beauty in nature. Right now, we're gonna take a look at some of the photographs that I have hanging at the Kent Memorial Library. And I'm gonna just um, talk briefly about them. Um, the first one is called Rhubarb at First Light. And this is one of my favorites. This is a picture of rhubarb just popping out of the ground in early spring. If anyone knows what rhubarb is, it's a perennial um, in the fruit category that's usually um, long pink stalks and broad green leaves. And you can cook with the stalks um, and make wonderful recipes. Very early in spring, um, farmers have to get going before there's ever anything really wonderful happening outside. So lots of times it's still very chilly in the morning and cold and kind of bland looking out there but we got to get those early seeds in the ground. So this particular morning, I was walking out bundled up, um, walking through the fields, and it was quite drab, but there was light shining through, the sunlight was shining through, and I was looking down and I stumbled upon just some little sprouts of rhubarb coming up out of the ground. And it was just a delightful scene. Um, these tight curly green leaves were sprouting up and their edges were all pink and purpley and I got very excited so I had to run back and get my camera and come out and this what you're seeing is a super close-up shot of rhubarb just popping out of the ground in early spring and you can see even the soil is just giving way to this rhubarb plant and this is just it's a great it's a different perception of what rhubarb looks like. And I really love this picture. So now we're gonna go to straw flower. So straw flower again is one of my favorites. Flowers are a wonderful thing to take pictures of. Um, they're beautiful in every st stage. They're beautiful when they're tight buds. They're beautiful when they're just starting to open up their petals and when their petals are falling off. Uh, there's so many ways you can take pictures of flowers and it's just, they're so inviting. There's their nature's uh, innocent children, as someone once said. So this is a straw flower and I grow straw flowers because I love the colors and I love how easy they dry. Um, when they're at this stage, uh, you can clip them take them inside, they will dry very nicely and they'll fan out a bit more into a full flower and you can have them for crafts, you can have them just in a vase for years. I mean, they're just gorgeous. Uh, so I grow lots of straw flowers. Uh, this one in particular was in this year, uh, not this year, but like three years ago. And it was the first straw flower of the year and it was just opening and it was so vibrant. It was this vibrant orange and I got very excited once again and had to go find my camera uh, to take a close up of this picture. And I love this picture because it's got the tight bud underneath it. It's just, it's again, one of those moments in time that I was able to truly capture. And that leads us to the next straw flower, straw flower two, which I just wanted to show you as well because it's actually a straw flower um, in a more open state. Um, and it's pink. And if you look at this straw flower, you see all the different shades of pink. And it, it's just, it's vibrant and beautiful. And, and along the sides of the photo, you can see other flowers that are just as vibrant in different colors. Um, again, just one of those, those photos that I just so, I enjoy so much looking at. Um, now we're gonna move to one called wet eggplant. 
So the photo you see here um, is the one I have hanging is actually more zoomed in. You don't see the actual bowl. Um, so it's more, um, the bowl's kind of out of the picture. And I have it framed and it's a canvas. Um, I have it developed in canvas. Um, and it's just spectacular because it's, it's purple eggplants and all different colors of peppers. This is a September harvest and it's sitting in a bowl of water and the way the light reflects on the water and the shadows, and there's even um, a few imperfections in the eggplant. It's, um, it's a stunning picture and it's one that I really love. Uh, we're gonna move on to blue claws. So the next picture is blue claws. Blue claws. So every year we go to Maine and we do a lot of hiking along the shoreline. Um, and I take lots of pictures, uh, shells and rocks and rocks in water and, and water on uh, boats. But uh, this particular hike, I stumbled upon these two claws and I just loved how the tips were blue. Um, so I put them against the rocks and the rocks have a little bit of orange moss to them. And I took a picture and once again, I've captured a moment in time that when I look at it, it brings me right back to hiking that shoreline. It was a nature preserve in Booth Bay Harbor. And finally, we're going to look at one last picture. It's Monhegan through the looking glass. This picture I really like for its composition. It has foreground, midground, and background. Um, if you've ever been to Monhegan Island, it's a beautiful place to hike the cliffs. Um, and it's just, the views are gorgeous. It's, it's kind of hard to capture what you're seeing. Um, it's just so spectacular. It's like you have to be there to really, to really feel it. But I really love this picture out of all the pictures I took on Monhegan. Um, because it was, we, had, we were hiking and we just came through that crevice and I happened to turn around and take a picture from behind. And later on when I looked at it, I really liked it because, you know, we had come through the crevice between the rocks and right down below was the water where we had just walked and the water was so blue that day. And then out in the distance is the hill that we had just come off of. And it, to me, captured the whole event of spending the day on Monhegan Island. So that is um, some pictures I wanted to share with you. And now we're gonna we're gonna see um, we're gonna go back to Lucy. From an early age, I have had a relationship with art. My curiosity of how books get published to wondering how the designs arrived on cereal boxes or who created the designs on faux wood grain on my desk at school because I certainly wasn't listening to the teachers. I was looking at the faux grain on my desk wondering who made this and what factory did they do it in. I was insistent on getting to the bottom of my quest to learn about the trade called commercial art. I majored in art in college and have been a graphic designer ever since. Whenever I'm out walking, I take lots of photos of things I appreciate. And like Maria, everything is, is so beautiful. I can't even believe my good fortune half the time because I don't set up any of the photos. They're just waiting for me to take them. Uh, I realize how fortunate I am that I am able to see such beauty. And I have chosen some works to share with you. I wish I could share them all, but I can't. So I've chosen a few. And the first one is Morning at Lake Clossipog. And this photo is not new. I took it in 1976. I had a job at Clossy Amusement Park. Before we opened the gates each morning, I took a walk around the park along the lake. 
and Quasi Amusement Park is in Middlebury, Connecticut. The park had a personality all of its own before the screaming children descended upon us. You'll be happy to hear that I was the helicopter operator for the summer. I was one of the first female ride operators they hired and soon learned that women actually watched the children on rides and cared for them. But anyway, I digress. Um, I just, the, these are paddle boats and they were parked every night and each morning there they sat waiting and I just, they were really beautiful in very primary colors, which have faded unfortunately, but um, I, I just love that photo and I wanted to share that with everyone. Um, my next photo is called Calm Before the COVID New York City. Um, I took this photo on March 8th of 2020 in Central Park before the 3 p.m. matinee of West Side Story. It was a lovely early spring day. Um, doesn't look like too many people were in the park, but there were because it was a really beautiful day and we kind of didn't really know what was coming by the end of the following week. Um, but by the way, there was not an empty seat in the theater that day. Um, so, but a week later, Broadway was shut down and I'm sure the park didn't have too many people visiting it either. Anyway, it was a beautiful, it's such a beautiful park. You could just, I could take pictures there all day long. Just beautiful. Um, and my next photo is called Cove Collective. And this is one of those photos that was just there waiting for me. I was in Ogunquit, Maine, walking across a footbridge in Perkins Cove, when all of a sudden these boats turned toward me and stood at attention. And they all look like every single one of them have eyes and they're all like smiling at me. So it just made me so happy. Um, and my next photo is called Ghost Ranch. And this has quite a bit of meaning for me because um, it's one of my fun trips to New Mexico and being a Georgia O'Keeffe admirer, I thought, well, I can't go to New Mexico without going to Ghost Ranch to go on some horse horsebacks and visit the home where she lived for a little while in Abiquiu, New Mexico, and where all of those mountains are that she painted, which I love. And uh, this was quite a, an experience to be riding through this land. We were not galloping whatsoever. We were just slowly walking because most of us were novices. And even if we had ridden when we were younger, it didn't come back as quickly, nor did I have the ability to ride. In fact, I was wondering how I was going to get on the horse or off it. But anyway, it was really fun. And uh, I love the colors of Ghost Ranch. And I just wanted to share that with you. And my final photo that I'm going to share with you is probably not, you're probably not seeing this for the first time if you saw our advertising for our show because this is on the poster. But this is another photo that was just sitting in a restaurant waiting for me to take a picture of it. And I just can't believe how cool it is. And it's called Cohorts. And I don't really know what else to say about it except for that, how lucky was I to come upon these lovely crayons in their primary colors, which I love. And that is my show. Now I'd like to wrap things up and thank Maria for sharing your beautiful photographs and thoughts about them with us. Uh, Maria, you are a fun office mate and a fun exhibit partner. So thanks a lot. And I hope everybody out there enjoys our photos together. 
and Lucy, thank you for doing the same. It's been really, it's been a lot of fun and it's given me reason to really look at my photos in depth and, and put them into matting and framing and the works. And I just so appreciate the opportunity. It's been wonderful. We'd like to remind you that you can go to the library's website to see our exhibit and to see our, all our wonderful photographs. And we're gonna walk you through right now how you would get to them. So where the green arrow is, you would click on events and exhibits. And that's going to bring you to our icon. So you would click on our icon And then it says online gallery. Right there, you would click on that and you will be able to view all of our lovely, well, no, there's one more step. After that, you're going to click on local artist gallery. And once you do that, you will be able to view all of our beautiful photographs. And if you have any interest in any of them, you can follow there's um, information on how you can contact us and purchase any photo that you wish. Thank you. And now we join the library's annual meeting.